Hey up everybody, welcome to the Steve and Samino Says Boom Show episode, I always say episode, but it's really the issue, issue number 34. Paul! Oh. Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Here we are. The Steven Tamino says boom show issue number 34. We got obviously the big guy, Steve, pushing things around. Look, he's knocking things, pushing over a bulldozer <laughs> over there. Like a Hulk buster <laughs> over there. <laughs> and we got Niall Scala down below. Niall, tell us what's going on today. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Everyone, you know what's going on. We got a great new episode today. And before we get started, make sure to look below, click that subscribe button, and smash that bell to get notifications when we upload awesome new videos and when we go live. And I'm here, Professor Samino. I'm here to learn. What yeah, Steve, we've been having a lot of special guests on, and this time we're taking a break from them, and we're going to have our... Uh... We're going to have our little powwow, the, th the three of us, and we're going to talk comics because we have to always get that back, and you know we love that. But before we get into that, I have a few little bit of news. First off, it, the news has been hit. 2022 in October at the New York Comic Con. Unfortunately, we're not going to be there, but Roy Thomas finally, finally is given the Harvey Kurtzman Award. He's in the Hall of Fame. That's going to be it's a uh, Roy. It was an honor for Roy because Roy knew Harvey, and he was also uh, he was also a mentor for Roy, and well deserved. Fifty seven years in the field, and finally getting one now in two thousand twenty two. A little late, but still, hey, he's here. He's happy, and that's why Neil Gaiman is also uh, inducted this year, and a few others. But uh, that's a special moment because I love when Roy gets his respectful due and uh, well deserved. And uh, another thing I wanted to say that uh, to people that uh, make sure they pick up, um, if they're out now, I have them right here, Marvel Legends 1 and 2, Roy Thomas, uh, uh, about what was going on with Wolverine from Hulk 181 to Giant Size X-Men number one, everything that was going on in between. And uh, people know now it's about uh, how we got that mask and uh, Roy kind of explains it in detail uh, a great adventure, great classic adventure. Steve, I don't know if you read those two issues. Have you read them yet? You know, the funny thing is, is that I picked up part two uh, last week. So I actually have those two issues because I don't, I, I can't, I can't read one story and then wait a month. So uh, I actually <laughs> yeah. have them on my kitchen table. And that's the first new issue that I purchased for myself in a thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> and why you're going to love it and Niall, I'm sure you read it. It was, oh yeah, it, 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 and it got a lot of great reviews because it. Think about it. It was refreshing, and it was just there was no. It was just a classic story. It comes right out of the '70s, and you'll know all the little connections it has because you'll know what what it's all based around. There's Captain America issues in there and everything. And what people don't realize is that Len Wein, when he was editor in chief and he was doing those comics, he made a mistake. And Roy discovered a mistake. So you're going to, Roy had to piece things together. And some people would ask me, how come he wrote it this way, that way? They don't realize that Roy had to piece things together and make it all work and, and, and explain things. So if you don't know, it's okay, but it's great. But the, all, the other thing I want to mention, because this was such, uh, it was such an incredible thing, was, okay, Colonel Bernard, though, okay, we talk about that guy. He's the colonel, and he's the leader of Department H in those two issues. And Roy named him after me, 
because my middle name is Bernardo. But what I didn't realize was that he first appeared in Hulk 181 on one page and he called he calls Wolverine Weapon X and he calls him a mutant. And but they only call him Sir. They don't give him a name. And then Roy made me that character. So what is so interesting is, as you can see, the first uh, go put that back up for a second, Niall. If you look on the database, on the on the database, it says Colonel Bernardo's first appearance is in Hulk 181. So because that's when he first appeared, and I'm actually created by Len Wein and Herb Trimpey, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm actually named by Roy, because look at his appearances. Hulk 181, Marvel, Le Marvel Legends 1, and Legends number 2. Unbelievable. You talk, I am literally in Hulk 181. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> so thank you. That's good now. But I, I just want to say, I get a little emotional of this and I want to thank Roy and Dan Thomas because this, think about that. This is just, that's, that's, that's cool. That's really that's cool really that cool. I'm actually, yeah. <laughs> my character is first appearance is in that issue. And what an honor it is for me to Roy to do that for me. And uh, I just want to say that I want to thank them. And uh, you know, my life has changed so much. And I'm also going to throw a thank you to you, Steve, and you, Nile, Steve, for being such a good friend of mine. And like, I know we would just be texting each other and joking around. And, uh, but I'm thankful for that you do this podcast with me. And I, I get emotional because I would, if I never got on this journey and living this fantastic life financially and all that stuff, I never would have met you. And Niall too, I want to thank you for in, for bringing me and Steve in this podcast on your network. And it, I, I, I'm humble because when I found all that stuff out, I, I just was like, I can't believe that was uh, crazy. So when I asked Roy about it and he said to me, yeah, I took that character and I made him you. And I was like, so I got a little Len Wein in me, a Herb Tripp and Roy <laughs> Thomas in me. And so next time I can never look at a Hulk 181 ever the same again. So it's pretty, it's pretty, I get emotional because how does that happen? I don't know. So sorry, awesome. I just wanted to that mention awesome. that. So I thank you guys and all that. And it's, it's just been an honor. And and as we all know, one more thing, uh, Hugh Jackman has been announced to play Wolverine again uh, in for Deadpool 3 in 2024. And uh, I know Roy is happy about that because I, I want to, I, I, I just love that. And I, I wanted him back and I want Roy to be happy and he, he's excited. And so once again, what a, what, a, what a day it's been when I found that out. So once again, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you both for being here and doing this with me and everybody out there that listens or oh, all the thousands of people I see at conventions. It's been an honor for me and to live this life. So thank you guys. So here, okay. here. Here, that's here. my, that's my rant. So thank but you. Then again, oh. I noticed that there's already a mistake. And if I become a writer at Marvel, I'm going to have to retcon you out because I've never seen a swath of blonde hair on you. So something <laughs> went wrong. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I will somehow get in there and retcon it out and explain that, you know, you're just like a, a scroll uh, imposter or something because I have never seen you with a swath of blonde hair. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well yeah. Well, thanks. I'll, I'll try. Well, who knows? Maybe I'm going to start. Who knows? Maybe I'm going to start. <laughs> Next show, he's going to have like Ken's hair. <laughs> blowing blonde. <laughs> Hey, hey, and one more thing, if you look at the panel that the, he, he's on that page, but if you look at that panel, Colonel, you can't see it on there, but he's a smoker. Yeah. He's got a cigarette in his hand. <laughs> and that's a that's a no, no now. Oh, that's okay. a great taboo. <laughs> OK, Steve, Nile. OK, talking about 181 actually makes sense to the issue that we're going to talk about today. And uh, without any further ado, and Steve doesn't know, Niall, will you present it? Bum, bum, bum. Yes. Ah, one, in my two. In my top 20 greatest superhero stories of all time, I mean, greatest Hulk stories of all time. And as anybody can remember, in our fourth issue, we interviewed Steve Englehart, and I asked him about this, and I told him. But now we're going to go in depth in this because obviously this got more popular because of 181. But I want to say something really quick. When I was going through, I saw this issue before I got to Hulk 181. I mean, 180 and 181. And I remember looking through the back issue bins and I saw Hulk 180 and I picked it up. 
I didn't care about Wolverine. And I saw that picture of Hulk fighting the Wendigo. And I was like, yes, he fights the Wendigo again. I was psyched <laughs> that, that the Hulk went against the Wendigo because I loved this issue so much. And Steve Englehart wrote a doozy. Oh, okay, so we're going to start right first page. It just goes, look at the title first off, Spawn of the Flesh Eater. Now, why this was so good, this was a horror story, too, on top of that, because this, this is what I call a classic, classic Hulk, pure Hulk tale. Obviously, written by Steve Englehart, Herb Trimp doing the art, and uh, Sal, what's that, Trappan? How do you say Trapani? his last name? What yeah, Sal Trapani. Yeah, Trapani, okay. Tra okay, doing the inking and stuff. Now, okay, Spawn of the Flesh Eater opens up. General Ross, he's looking at screens of the Hulk, but where is he? It's look, he's at the briefing room of the Canadian High Military Command. Why is he there? We'll see. Next page. It's General Ross showing the Canadian, because the Hulk is loose in Canada right now. The issue before that, Steve, I don't know if you remember that issue. The Hulk fights the Mimic and the Beast. And remember, he was getting weak because the Mimic was siphoning the gamma energy off him. That's how he appeared in Canada. But Gen so General Ross following him. Now, everybody knows this is why Herb Trimpey loved to draw the Hulk. Not just because he drew the Hulk awesome. He loved to draw the military and the planes and all that. That was something that he loved more than ever. So, I mean, you'll always see plane shots. As people know, if anybody knows Herb Trimpey, that he loved that stuff. And he was so good at drawing planes and um, military vehicles and all that stuff. It was unbelievable. So anyways, we have her, um, we have um, General Ross talking to the brass of Canada and showing them that the Hulk. And basically he's telling them why he should get the Hulk, get the Hulk because he's more qualified than them and he has the military equipment to do it. Next page, now. And so here you go. They, they agree, you know, they give him a shot at it. And so now the Hulk is leaving, the, leaving, walking the wilderness. And like I said, he was just with the mimic. And so why this is great is like you have the Hulk always trying to figure out why he's there, what he's doing, almost what his purpose is. It's almost like Steve at dinner time. What is he going to eat? <laughs> What's he going to do? <laughs> it's so <laughs> awesome. Next page now. Hulk getting frustrated. Now, this is very interesting piece of lore. Steve, I'm going to ask a question. What was Steve Englehart a genius in? You said it to him on the interview. What was he a genius in when it came to writing comics? Continuity. Yes. Okay. Here's the Hulk. All of a sudden, he's hearing a voice in his head. And it's somebody named Paul Cartier. And he can't figure out why he's hearing this and he's getting mad and he's trying to talk and he's he's hearing this voice now why this is so important is steve people would ask how how can the hulk hear these sounds and all this stuff why why is his brain able to do that people don't realize but back in marvel feature number one in 1971 written by roy thomas do you remember that issue yes Doctor Strange comes looking for the Hulk and he's trying to gather him and he comes in his astral form. Look, it's Steve knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the Hulk could see him and Doctor Strange was mystified that the Hulk could see him. And Doctor Strange says in that issue, this is started by Roy Thomas. This is beautiful. That the Hulk's brain works on some mystical level. There's something else going on in the Hulk's mind. The, the Hulk is something else than they think him to be. So he can see astral planes and all the, uh, the astral ghosts. And he can see things on there. And he can also hear sounds and ghosts and all that stuff. Steve Englehart, here in 1973, remembered that and geared that toward the Hulk that he's able to hear this curse, because as we'll find out later, the Wendigo is a curse, but the, he's able, the Hulk is able to hear him. So I thought that was genius and all that stuff. You remember that, Steve, right? When uh, Baba Feature. Okay, so the Hulk is out there. He starts hearing these sounds and all that stuff. And you can see him on the last panel. Poor Hulk. Hello? 
Hello? He doesn't know what's going on because he doesn't understand what he has. Next panel, next page. And of course, he gets attacked by people because they see him. They get scared. It's like when Steve's walking into a room. They get out their guns and they attack. They, attack. they don't know what Steve's going to do. They know he can either snap or be nice. They don't know. But look at the Hulk. He's throwing these guys around. So that's pretty pretty tough. But then you see this girl. She starts battering, bat battering on, on him, too. And she's just saying, what have you done with my brother? What have you done with my brother? And see, this is a tender moment for the Hulk. Here's the Hulk's pissed and all this stuff. This girl's hitting him. Next page, Nile. Great three panels at the top. And she tells, she tells him that she thinks, she thinks that he's the Wendigo. She thinks that she has the Hulk. They, they're, 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 she's saying she's, she said like he only needed food. Like she's saying, and the Hulk. Look at how the Hulk tender. It's just a great three panels of her breaking down, and the Hulk feels bad for her. And he says, I'm not the one to go. And he goes, Hulk doesn't hurt people who don't hurt him. But then he cares for her. And he's thinking that Hulk heard that Paul in his head, you know, and he's like, Hulk will do what he can to help you. And so he's look at the Hulk, so innocent, sees this girl, turns off and just goes. Next page now. I put this page in here because it's very interesting. This is kind of an interlude thing of what, what's going on. And the reason why I put this in there is because I wanted Steve to see this and wanted to know how mad I was. At this time, Glenn Talbot and Betty Ross were engaged to be married. And I was so mad because I was so jealous for, for, for Bruce Banner because, Steve, do you remember when the, Banner was going to marry the Betty and then the leader – does something to his brain. He turns into the Hulk. He smashes everything. I was so mad. And Glenn Talbot, as we all know, is was in love with Betty Ross and stuff. But she, even though she's married to him, deep down, she still loved Bruce. But I was always so jealous about this. I hate it. I didn't even want to read this page because I was like, she belongs to Bruce. And Glenn Talbot had her. So I just wanted to tell you that they're now they're off in the mountains. They now bastards. All right, next page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's why I include that. But this is this. We're gonna go back to this page now. Here's the Hulk doing what he can, and he's just following this this voice in him. Look at that. If you look at that, you're gonna realize why this is more scary than it is. But you see that mound on the top panel. You see that mound of fur. And obviously it's the Wendigo. These, uh, the, the Hulk comes to it and you see this roar. And then the Hulk is like, monster? Hulk almost stepped on the monster. And he's like, must be Wendigo that the, um, that the people think Hulk is. Monster that makes girl cry. Monster that Hulk wants. Um, monster, Hulk wants Paul. So anyways, next page. I love this. This is Steve hitting me right off the bat. And it has no <laughs> effect on me. So, Steve, so the Wendigo just throws a punch. But, but. I love this. Steve, can you read the middle? Uh, can you read that middle panel, what the Hulk says? If that is best, Wendigo can do. Hulk laughs. Hulk can wait. Man crawls from behind rock. You see, when you punch me when, when, before, it does no effect. But this is why that was so scary. So here, a guy starts screaming. And what he says is that the Wendigo, he was, he's a prisoner of the Wendigo. And what the Wendigo does is he, he traps them and he just waits till he gets hungry and he teases them before he wants to eat them. And then you see the Wendigo slap them away. So now, Niall, go back. Go back to that, the, the, the page you just, what you just came from. Look at that top panel. This is what scared me. You got the Wendigo on top of that guy, right? You got the Wendigo on and he's just like, he's just like, playing with him he's like laying on top of him i was thinking to myself when i was a kid like holy crap that wendigo is so cruel and that's what made me really because he's like basically laying on top of him and just kind of like breathing on who knows what he's doing you can think of the horror that guy I was like holy christ that is freaking scary okay go back go back now i was just thinking okay so here the guy hits the hits the guy and the hulk attacks him now, this is great, too. So the Hulk jumps him, Wendigo picks him up and throws him. But now you've got that last panel. This is Herb Trimpey doing awesome. And when I was a kid, you always wanted these fights. But look at the Hulk running back. And you see that fist that's geared, ready to go? And I love when he says, bah, Wendigo thinks he is better than Hulk. 
because he is bigger than Hulk. And Hulk says something very interesting right here. He goes, Wendigo doesn't know he may be strongest of all Hulk's enemies. So that's a big claim right there. Eagle, right? I mean, wow. But lots were bigger than him, and Hulk never lost. I'm coming at Steve right now. You see that punch? Next page. Ba -ba! Look at See, what I loved about Trimp is Trimp was always good at using that same fist. I told you I always hated when the, uh, the, the, the artist would draw the, the, the guy cocked, and then when you see the punch, he uses the other fist. That drove me crazy. But anyways, you see the Hulk punch him. They're fighting. He throws a boulder on him. But Wendigo is able to take it, and then he punches him off the cliff. Next page. The Hulk gets up, and he looks at the Wendigo, and the Wendigo throws the, throws, uh, the, uh, the man down. And Hulk, and he goes, and, and Hulk catches him, and Hulk catches. So he, he Hulk thinks it's Paul. So the Hulk catches him, and he goes, he doesn't want to fight anymore. He's going to go back to the girl. Next page. So the Hulk comes running back. He thinks he's got Paul and all that stuff. And then when she comes running out, she thinks it's her brother, mm -hmm. but it's his George Baptiste. It's not, it's not Paul. So, but what you hear here is that the story of what happened. It's basically Paul and George and Henry, another friend, were um, hunting. Then they got trapped by some wolves. And so they were there for four days before they started to go crazy of hunger because they couldn't do it. And, uh, and uh, but during that, the wolves attacking them, though, Henry got, got wounded and eventually died. So these guys start getting crazy. And what happens? Paul started eating Henry. And uh, they couldn't believe it. As you see the um, his sister, she's like, oh, my Lord, Paul. But what she what what it's not explained is in the Canadian woods, there's a curse that goes around. And if you eat. So that's why Steve has always not gone to the Canadian woods, <laughs> because because <laughs> who knows what would happen. But you become a Wendigo. And that's basically <laughs> what happened. So so next page. The Hulk just under he doesn't really know what's going on, but he just knows that wasn't Paul and he has to get to the Wendigo. So uh, look at the Hulk. He's hated, he's hunted, but he has a soft spot for this girl and he does what's right. And that's what I love. I, I loved about this. And so the Hulk is going back to the Wendigo and he's like, I got to get Paul from the Wendigo. So you see the Hulk leaping. He's going. Next page. This panel, top panel, always scared the crap out of me. I can't read Canadian, but look at the Wendigo just chasing <laughs> these people, and he just wants to eat them. This was kind of un <laughs> like I never saw this in a comic because, like, usually yeah, they well, want to only get in trouble, John. Remember, it's yeah. French. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, French, French. <laughs> that's right. I need to say that's right, French. I'm sorry, but I was, I was like, I was surprised because he's trying to eat these people and i'm like that that is so that was so different for me that was you got to remember when i read this i was at a very rookie like i was a i was learning all this stuff but i just thought that was so weird and so scary so here comes the hulk the wendigo looks at him and then you hear paul baptiste talking and he's saying help me uh oh excuse me paul cartier talking and he's like help me hulk my name is paul cartier but my mind is dissolving. And I love this. He says, Hulk hears you, Paul. Next page. And Hulk will save you. Oh, I love it. He just rips the ground and he attacks them. But while they're fighting, look at them just rolling around these brutes and just destroying everything. But the Hulk, is, if you look at that second panel, the Hulk doesn't understand why he can hear the Wendigo, but his mouth isn't moving. I love that. And he says, like, he goes, he goes, there's so much Hulk doesn't. So the Hulk is brawling and he's still trying to figure out these things of what's going on. And so anyways, and the Hulk's thinking, I'm going to take the Wendigo back and they can fix him because he knows he can't. So anyways, look at the foom. They land on that stuff. Oh, I love it. Look at them rolling down the hill. I love you, Herb. I love you. It's so, <laughs> it's so good. Next page. And here's the first time we ever hear the screen. What did what does he say, uh, Steve? Can you read that? Which which panel? Uh, the top panel. What is the first thing the Wendigo ever says? It's the first time it screamed. 
Wendy go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time. And th that is the <laughs> And look, but look what the Hulk says. The Hulk is, huh? That time the the creature's mouth worked. Like the Hulk seed is, and you see, so now you got Paul saying, fight for me, Hulk, fight for me. Look at the Wendigo taking this log. He hits it on the Hulk. Look at the Hulk skill. The Hulk blocks it. He goes, huh, Wendigo can't hit Hulk when Hulk has his own big stick. And then he goes, but Hulk can tell when enemies are balanced, when Hulk can hit back. Ba boom. I loved it. And now in that last panel, Hulk sees now. Wendigo has Paul trapped inside him. Wendigo makes Paul do things Paul doesn't want to do. It hurts Paul, and that makes Hulk mad. Now he's getting pissed. But look what Steve Englehart writes. This was so perfect. It's what we all think when the Hulk's saying that. Steve Englehart, how ironic, since the Incredible One has never understood that his own situation has many of the same characteristics. I love that because when the Hulk said that, I was thinking that, and then Steve Englehart reiterated it and he made it like, yes, I, I just love stuff like that. Next page. We got, what does the Wendigo say, Steve? Wendigo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Hulk is now mad. So Wendigo takes a chain, he throws it on him. And I love this. He picks up a crane. Look what the Hulk says chains rip like ribbons hulk said he was mad next page read it steve read the top come on the matter the hulk gets the stronger he gets no one beats hulk <laughs> he shatters the whole crane because look the hulk is pissed now i love this wendigo looks confused wasn't expecting hulk to stay alive nobody ever expects hulk to do what he does that's why hulk always wins that is why Hulk is Hulk. And that is why Wendigo will lose. So now look at that. Hulk's pissed. So his strength is increasing. He's now stronger than the Wendigo. And look at, he beats the ever loving. Oh my God. That's like Steve versus Niall right there. Niall's just <laughs> going down. There ain't nothing he can do. <laughs> okay, next page. Now this is where the whole heart of the story comes. Look at the Hulk though. They say he has no skill. Look at that. He has his arm bent back and his face shoved ground. And he goes, now monster. But then he starts hearing, it's too late. The time is passing, curse overcoming me, brain fogging. Not your fault. No one could help me. No one that now only Wendigo is left. And what's the last thing he says, Steve? Wendigo. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear the Hulk go, oh, okay. But this, this, these last two panels summed up everything for me. Then, as the mighty Hulk falls forward, stunned by the sheer force of the unexpected blow, the woods beast propels itself away and into the pine green home with only its recall remaining. Steve? Wendigo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Voice said Paul was gone, changed completely into a monster. And this is the learning. This last panel said it all. And even with all his, even, and Hulk, even with all his power, could do nothing. So, once again, did the Hulk fail? He, like, he overpowers Wendigo, but ultimately he loses and he can't find redemption. And so they're going to hate him and hound him even more because the Hulk goes back. That was, as a kid reading that, like I said, it's a pure Hulk story, a big, great fight, but also the Hulk trying to figure out what's going on, hated by people, but still, but still helping them out, even if he's hated. Because now that he even, now he even fails, he learns that strength isn't everything because he couldn't help him. But He's still going to go on trying to do this good thing. And he's still going to go on being hunted, tormented, and, and hated. And I always felt so bad for him because the, the Hulk never caught a break, especially at those that time. And it's like he was trying to do the right thing because, you know, with the Wendigo gone, they're just going to think the Hulk is like he just gone off and did his own thing. And he didn't care about nobody. But the Hulk was actually trying so hard to help this girl. And he had that heart in him. And I. I fell in absolute love with that because it was so touching that 
he couldn't even his strength couldn't help him in this situation. So that's good. Okay, Steve, your uh, your take on that. You know, I'm constantly reminded of how lucky me and you were, John, to go from Roy to Steve oh. to Roger to Bill. Um, and Len. And Len. Yes, Len. of course. Um, this, again, uh I'm a huge, massive uh, Steve Engelhart fan. As you know, when we, when he was on here, I was slathering so bad I had to have some tissues here. Uh, and this, again, is another example of very clever writing with use of continuity, as John said, using an idea that Roy had brought up, the fact that uh, the Hulk has a sixth sense. Something happened when he became irradiated. His brain cells are different. It has given him access to different things. And this is one of those classic stories. And this is what modern writers can't do. Modern writers have steered out clear of the Hulk will smash because to them, they can't, they can't do it. Steve Englehart manages to do a whole issue where the Hulk and Wendigo are just pounding on each other, but interspersed with these little bits of dialogue giving you a little bit more and Steve's wording. And of course, Herb's drawing, of course, uh, enthralled the young John so much, you know, and yes, the right. That is, I didn't think about it before, but you're right. That first scene where the Wendigo is probably resting on top of that guy <laughs> waiting for his hunger to, you know, that, that guy, he was in hell. You know, so yeah, it's definitely uh, a, a great issue. And again, of course, Len, you know, manages to say, "Well, I'm not going to let the Wendigo story go. I'm going to bring him back." And so we get the we get to see Wendigo again. And of course, uh, Bill Manco does a great Wendigo story in issue 272. You're going to um, do that one, right? You're going <laughs> to do that. Oh my god! And he takes the the fear up a goal. Oh, that is a yeah. scary. Believe you me, uh, in the future day, we'll be talking about that issue. You can bet your bottom oh. dollar. Uh, but yeah, um, again, uh, a very special issue for me as well. Um, of course, it's, you know, we're, we're sort of like brethren uh, when it comes to the Hulk. And uh, all hail uh, Steve Englehart and, of course, the late, great Herb Trimpey, a fantastic issue. Yeah. Uh, and one more thing. you got to remember, when Hulk had that mind thing, Roy wrote that two years prior. That was 1971. Englehart brings it back in 1973 with that issue. And it's funny. I, when I read that, I realized that because I remembered Roy establishing that the Hulk's mind doesn't work like, like it, there's something mystical. I remember Dr. Strange saying it's a, so if anybody wants to read when that issue, when the Hulk's mind is more, a lot more advanced, it's Marvel Fanfare number one, the first Marvel appearance feature. of. Yeah, Marvel feature, right, excuse me. The first appearance, the first real appearance of the Defenders and uh, uh, and uh, that with the beautiful Neil Adams cover, but that, it just was so genius. And like I said, today people will read that comic and, and be like, eh, yeah, well, it's okay, it's a little bit, but that is so Hulk because once again, he's fighting, he's trying to understand the world around him. He doesn't really know what to do but he's trying to do the right thing, you know, like, because in his heart, he has Bruce Banner, you know, he's a good person. And yet he does so well and he fails because what does the Hulk really know how to do? He knows how to hit. He can't think of like, but, and people think he's dumb. He's not, he's childlike and he's very keen minded, but he's childlike and he always tries to discover the world around him, but he can't because they're all fearful of him. They all want something from mm -hmm. him. Some villain wants to take his power and people are afraid of him. But like when some people like children come to like, you know, it's almost like the Frankenstein thing when they come to like, love, like to like give him, they like him and stuff. Then the parents go nuts and they come with the guns and the pitchfork. And so he can never find peace that way. And it's always like going off to another thing, another thing. And that's the tragedy of the Hulk. He is probably, and they don't do it anymore but he is the most tragic Marvel character, especially the most popular yeah. one tragic. And I love that. 
So, Niall, what do you think? I know this is a, yeah. a different issue from the norm that you're used to. but Well, that issue, man, I mean, it, it, what I love about when you reintroduce these issues back and you start dissecting them and going through them is you, you, a, you break out the emotion of it. Right. So, you know, comics then were, you know, 30% dialogue, 70% art. Now it's the opposite, right. It's so much heavy, but it's at the same point, we're getting that heavy dialogue. Cause even just from you going through it, I start, you feel the woes of, of the Hulk and what he's going through. And the fact that he has good in him, but no one c- catches him a break. You know, there's always after him. He sees something. So we see the fist bumping and the Hulk smash. But then there's a very serious uh, mental telepathic type of dialogue going on, a communication where Hulk's trying to understand what's going on and then realizing that it's the Wendigo and the, the, the man trapped inside the beast and he wants to help him. So he's fighting the beast, but inside he's trying to figure out how is he going to save him? But then ultimately at the end, as in most of these Hulk books, it's just <laughs> a sad like, oh, well, you know, my power can't cure all, you know, and, and then Hulk's back on his his next issue. Steve, you'll love to hear this, that I remember when I was in uh, when I was just uh, learning these comic books and getting like, you know, getting them in the back issues and like they were just wonderful. They were so cheap too, like 50 cents a dollar, the, yeah. these things. And uh, I remember I got my friend Joe into them and, and I gave him a few Hulks to read. So he read it for like a week and then he comes back to me and he says, why doesn't the army just leave him alone? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, and he goes, why don't they just leave him alone and stuff? And so it was so classic because he started, you know, he started be feeling sympathetic for the Hulk. And that is what the Hulk is. He's got all this power to do, to pu- move mountains, but it still doesn't b- bring him happiness. You know, it, 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 mm-hmm. and, it, and it, like, like I said, the world around him is just so fearful of him. And he's not that way. And it just puts him in situations that he explodes and all that stuff. So I just, I love that. And like I said, I loved how Steve Englehart wrote those dialogues. And, 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 and Niall, one more thing. Can you put up that page of the Wendigo, like on top of that guy, what Steve was saying? I want to show you something, why it even made me more scary. Look at the Wendigo in that top panel, Steve. You don't really know what he's doing. Like, it's very hard to decipher how he is. So it makes you, I don't know if Trimpy did that by mistake or he did that on purpose because you're like, what is he doing? And he's on top of that guy. And it's like, you don't know the angles. That That's when I, came, when I would look back, I was like, oh my God, what is he doing to that guy? <laughs> like, I loved it. And it was horrifying at the same time, but, oh just so classic when you look at these issues and and i was proud uh just so you know when uh roy wrote his uh his tashin hulk book and it had the 10 greatest hulk stories in this was included and he included it for me because i gave him a list of what i wanted and i said roy if you're gonna put anything in that book you gotta put that one i wanted i wanted the monster one the, the annual one that we did before but it was too many pages but i said you gotta put that wendigo now Really quickly, if um, uh, it, this story, some people might say like, yeah, whatever, whatever. But in 1996, do you, do you remember the Hulk animated series, Steve? Yeah. Do you remember that now? Lou Ferrigno yeah. did the voice. Do you oh, remember yeah. that in 96, that Hulk animated series? Yes. They made episode 10. I remember watching it. And the wind cries Wendigo. They had that story in a cartoon, in, in, a, in an episode. It was a little different. They had it as a Native American. And basically, he had to be defeated in combat. He was running around the wo- people. He was like slaughtering people. But but they couldn't call it flesh eater and all that stuff. But the, he had to be defeated in combat. And so they, they, they do it. There has a lot of beats like that story. But at the end, the Hulk and the Wendigo fight. If you tell me, and we're going to play it at the end of this episode. I gave now right now we have that. So anybody who oh, wants yeah. to know what I'm talking about, I watched that bit. I think it's only like a minute, that last fight. Because back then there was they didn't really fight on on uh on you they couldn't punch each other on uh on cartoons, but the Hulk and Wendigo beat the crap out of each other, and the Hulk beats them, and then it's just it's so fierce. I watched that like a thousand times. It was such a breath of fresh air, and I love to see that. And when I first met Steve Englehart. 
And we started talking. This is when I was a fan. I told him about that. And he said he never saw it. And I said, I was so happy that that was a cartoon. I go, it blew my mind because I loved that story. And Steve, you should know that the second time I saw that story, because I, I had a ratty comic and all that stuff, was in those, uh, those uh, the, the English guides. Uh, you know those comics? It, 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 had, it was in black and white. Oh, I had, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the comic guy had a whole batch had a whole batch of those. And I remember looking through and I'm like, here's the Wendigo. I could, cause it was in four parts. They don't, they only, cause you know how they had like a yes, few. They, it was very <laughs> annoying. It would split it into four. Oh God. Yeah, they, I didn't get the first one, but I got the next three. But I remember because, you know, getting back issues, like I, I didn't have the money for that, but you know, and they were selling those, those each each one of those issues for 25 cents each and there was a bucket of it. but i said oh my god there's the wendigo issue and he had i couldn't get the first part but i got two three and four and i was like yeah that was great <laughs> so anyways that story has is a, is a piece of my heart and it will always be one of my greatest and so once again thank you guys for doing this and uh any last words for uh steve now uh you know um funny thing is oh. Whenever you, uh, whenever I see this issue, it reminds me of when I used to be a hyper super fan. And when I finally got all the Hulks and Defenders, now this is going to, you, you guys are just going to say, what was wrong with you? I went through issue by issue, marking down where he was to try and work out his continuity. So I followed him from Hulk, oh, wow. one, uh, Hulk 160, where he's at Niagara Falls. Then he yep. goes into 161 in Canada, and then he carries yep. on in Canada. So I read my Hulks and my Defenders, and I was trying to work out where the continuity goes. And then, for those of you who are trying to work out continuity, don't even think about Avengers 100. <laughs> How did the Hulk get over to England? I, I died. I was rolling on the floor trying to work out the continuity. So I remember specifically thinking, oh, he's, he's going through Canada. And Steve Englehart, you know, he knew his stuff. He's going backwards and forwards. That was a fun time when I had amazing amounts of free time to just to spend <laughs> months going over continuity between panels. Uh, so, again, thank you for bringing up this issue. It, took, it takes me back to when I finally had all the Hulks and Defenders and I could work out, uh, try, try and work out the continuity. <laughs> And, and and now before I give it to you, what's so funny is there's the Hulk in that last panel. He's so sad because his power can't hurt him. Go to right to the next issue. General Ross is on him shooting missiles at him. First, first page. The Hulk doesn't even have time to to, to digest and oh, like, yeah. okay. remember to the Gremlin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is phenomenal. Oh my God! But right away he's already shooting missiles at him. So. Like, the Hulk has no time to 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 to, to take it in. So now you can end it here. What if he said? doesn't catch a break, man? But yeah, no, these these back issues are. I really encourage everyone to dive into these because this is this is what the writers today, man. If they were just reading these books, they would get it. They would get how please. they can get you to escape please, into an amazing world. Research, please, oh, please. That's, it. that's it. In that little bit of time, my heart was breaking for Hulk. All right, <laughs> at the end of that, I was like, ah, I know Hulk. We can't win them all. One of these days, you are going to win it, though. <laughs> so Incredible. great. Incredible. So, hey, so tell us what you love. We're going to be back. we got more guests coming up and all that. So, Steve, I prepare Mighty Mystic Mill Man. Boom! Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. 
Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon. All right.